Uh, hello, Dr. Sabur. Is everything okay? Sir, everything is fine. Now uh, we will start. My mic is going to okay, today. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all on the 75th anniversary celebration of the United Nations. And as the world celebrates this day, the 24th of October, for acknowledging the organization's tireless service towards the people and our planet, we, the political science department of Tetzel College, with our esteemed guests, teachers, and together with our students, are gathered here to commemorate and celebrate this auspicious day. My name is Bogut Ali Eptomi of MA third semester. And my name is Alex Ryu of BA fifth semester, political science department. And before we go any further, I would like to highlight the order of the program. Chairperson will be Alex Ryu and Bogut Ali Eptomi. Welcome not by Dr. Remy Longmai, HOD of Political Science of Tetsu College. Guest speaker, Professor H. John Sema, Dean of School of Social Science and Dean of School of Management, Nalang University. The first recorded song, Heal the World by Im Kong Tungzuk of BA third semester and We Are the World by Hinoli T. Chishi of BA third semester. Second, speeches from the students, Phili Nyumai on UN Women, Zunkum Yumchinger on UN World Food Program, Kehito T. Jimomi on UN Climate Change, short speech by Dr. Hewasa Lorin, Vice Principal of Tetsa College, recorded dance, contemporary dance by K. Rachel Izung, and Ross M. Lota, BA third semester. Special appeal and message, students and teachers. Commemorative speech by our guest speaker. Mass reading of the preamble of the UN as a joint plate of allegiance to the UN. Word of thanks by Dr. Anirudha Babur, assistant professor of Tetsu College. Before we start, I would like to ask Dr. Amy HOD of Political Science of Department, that's a college, to give the welcome note. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Alex, Rio, and Ketoli, and Tommy, chairpersons for this event. Good afternoon, everyone. Once again, welcome everyone to this remarkable event organized by the Department of Political Science, Tetsu College, Dimapur. Thank you all for joining us for today's program to mark the 75th anniversary of the United Nations and its founding charter. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are indeed fortunate to have Professor H. John Sema, Professor of Political Science and Dean of School of Social Sciences and also Dean in Charge of School of Management Nagaland University as our guest speaker. Thank you very much, respected sir, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. We heartily welcome you and are eagerly waiting to listen to you this afternoon. And with the same enthusiastic spirit, I am also delighted to welcome our Vice Principal, Dr. Hevasa Lorin, who will deliver a short speech on this auspicious occasion. Respected ma'am, thank you so very much for being here with us today. I now would like to acknowledge the presence of, you know, uh, our director, our deans, our HODs, and uh, our esteemed guests, and also extend our warm welcome to each one of them. But uh, last but not least, let me welcome and say a big thank you to all the participants for joining us for today's event. Well, about today's event, as we recall it, notably three developments, the forces of nationalism and militarism 
an intense armaments race and a system of rival alliances led to extreme international tension and conflict in the early 1900s, despite efforts to bring nations closer together. Perhaps for the first time in history, according to libel estimates, over 8 million people lost their life in battle during the First World War. Many more than that number were wounded and millions were crippled for life. The loss of life among the civilian population was almost as great as that among the armed forces. The destruction of property was appalling. There were also other costs of the war which were even harder to estimate. The First World War encouraged the world to invest in an international organization to deal with conflict. Many believe such believed that such an organization would help the world to avoid war. As a result, the League of Nations was born. The new League of Nations was created to promote cooperation and peace. According to its covenant, it had two main aims, to promote international cooperation and maintain peace by the peaceful settlement of disputes and by reducing armaments. However, despite its initial success, it could not prevent the Second World War. Many more people died and were wounded in this war than ever before. The United Nations was founded as a successor to the League of Nations on the 24th of October, 1945. It was organized to preserve peace and give a voice to all independent sovereign nations, regardless of size. Today, we all gather here to join the international community in solidarity to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the UN and its founding charter under the team recalling and supporting the founding mission of the United Nations. And to pay rich tribute to those great men and women who have successfully put ideas into action, which now turn 75 and is still working for world peace, security, equality, development, and welfare of all. The future we want, the United Nations we need, reaffirming our collective Commitment to multilateralism is the theme for UN Day this year. And we are joining the rest of the world in celebrating the UN Day through this program. Thank you, everyone, and looking forward to enjoy the rest of the program. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Remy, for coming and designating of this day. Next order of program, we have songs by Im Titongzuk, BA third semester, Heal the World, followed by Hinoliti Chishi, BA third semester, We Are the World. Nothing, no, 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 no
know that it is love and this flame be much brighter than tomorrow. If you try, you'll find there's no need to cry alone. In this flame, you feel there's no hurt or sorrow. There are ways to get there if you care enough for the leaving. Make a legal space. Make a better way. Heal the world. Make it a better place. Oh, you are to me and the entire human race. There are people dying if you care enough for the living to make a better place for you and for me. If we try, we shall see in this place we cannot defeat. We will dread, we stop existing and start leaving. If you want to you know why, there's a love that cannot lie. Love is strong, it only cares for joyful giving. That it feels that our way. Love's enough for us growing So make a better world Make a better world Make it a better place For you and for me And the entire human race There are people that eat If you care for the living, make a better place for you and for me. And the dream will conceived in will be a joyful faith. And the world you once believed in will shine again in grace. Why do we keep spending life for this world to fight its so? own? Though it's bad to see this world inside God's blue Make it a better place For you and for me And the entire human race There are people dying if you care enough for the living, so make a better place for you and for me. There are people dying. If you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. We 
Thank you, Imkom Enzuk and Hinoli TGC of the Attractive Master for your manager's song. Second, we have speeches from the students. First, Fili Nyomai on UN Women. Second, Zunkum Yimchungo on UN World Food Program. Third, Kehito T. Rimomi on UN Climate Change. If you are ready, you can take your time respectively. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is UN, United Nations Day, so on this special day, I want to talk about United Nations Women. The United Nations Women is the, UN, is the United Nations entity formed in 2011 by merging earlier agencies related to UN. It is dedicated to gender equality and for the empowerment of women. This entity was established to accelerate progress on meeting the needs worldwide. UN Women works with governments and civil societies for achieving gender equalities and design laws, policies, programs, and services necessary for achieving goals. It also works globally to visualize the sustainable development goals as a reality for women and girls. Women participation is focused through four strategies, like women leadership and participation, women empowerment through education, employment, and financial autonomy, thus enabling them to live life freely from all kinds of violence for their contribution in having a sustainable future. The Commission on the Status of Women, founded in 1947, is the principal global intergovernmental body and exclusively dedicated to the promotion of gender equality and women empowerment. Through this commission, conventions on women rights related to political rights, civil rights, and economic rights were also drafted. A major step towards consolidation of UN stand on women rights is the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. It was established in 1979. The year 1975 was designated as International Women's Year, followed by 1976 to 1985, which was declared as the UN Decade for Women. Its landmarks in the efforts of the Commission came with the Beijing Declaration and calls for a platform of action in 1995. Thus, UN Women charts out its agenda for gender equality across all the sustainable development goals to be achieved by 2030. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, afternoon to you all. <clears throat> respected our vice, respected our vice principal, our case speakers, teachers, and all my dear friends. First of all, I would like to give thanks for this privilege to give a speech on this auspicious day of United Nations Day on team regarding and supporting the founding mission of the UN. Well, my speech is on U United Nations World Food Program, and so here it goes. The World Food Program (WFP) is the leading humanitarian organization saving lives and changing lives, delivering food assistance in emergencies and working with communities to improve nutrition and build resilience. As the international community has committed to, committed to end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition by 2030, there is a struggle to break the cycle of hunger and poverty by 2030. For its effort to combat hunger, for its contribution to better condition for peace in conflict areas, for prevent, preventing the use hunger as weapons of war and conflict, WFP was awarded the, the Nobel Peace Prize 2020. WFP's effort focuses on emergency relief and rehabilitation, development aid and special operations. During emergencies, this UN program provides food assistance to the victims of war, civil conflicts, fraud and natural disasters. 
It focuses on nutrition, especially for women and children, and limiting school meals, buying food from closer areas to help sustain local economies. WFP meets people's food needs through cash pets transfers. It also provides air services as part of its humanitarian program. WFP is funded by voluntary donation and it works closely with Food and Agricultural Organization of the UN and the International Fund for Agricultural Development. That's all. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and a very special warm greeting to all of you on this uh, United Nations Day. I would like to say a topic on the United Nations climate change. Climate change is the defining issue of our time, and we are at a defining moment from shifting weather patterns, which threaten food security, rising sea levels, catastrophic floods at unprecedented levels. So to reduce the impact, one has to concentrate on reducing greenhouse gas emissions. These occur naturally and are essentially for human survival and other living beings. With acceleration of industrialization, deforestation and large-scale cultivation and burning of fossil fuel emission of greenhouse gases have increased, leading to global rise in temperature. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change was set up to assess the climate change. According to this, there is considerable damage to Earth ecosystem, planetary climatic system, destruction to Amazon rainforest, and the Arctic tundra, alarming retreat of mountainous glaciers, an effect in downstream water supply, which will have repercussion transcending to future generation. So to tackle these changes, the United Nations has few legal instruments like the United Nations Framework on Climate Change, such as Kyoto Protocol, that is binding members nation to reduce the emission, which was founded in the year 1995, and the Paris Conference in the year 2015, in order to check the global warming, and in 2019, the Climate Action Summit focused on areas like heavy industry, nature-based solution, cities, energy, resilience, and climate finance, climate action, that is also one of the sustainable development goals, which was done in the year 2030. In 2007, the Nobel Peace Prize was awarded jointly to former USA Vice President A.I. Gore and the IPCC for their effort to build up and disseminate greater knowledge about man-made climate change and to lay a foundation for the measures that are needed to counteract that change. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, MA third semester students, for a short briefing us on the various UN programs. Now we have a speech by Dr. Yawasa Lauren, Vice Principal at Tetsu College. You may take your time. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me fine. Just let me know in between the program. If you cannot hear me, you can just interrupt me in between. Yes, okay? It's clear. It's clear. Okay. So um, let me begin by um, wishing you all a very good afternoon, respected chairperson, and our distinguished guest speaker, Professor H. John Sema, the Dean of School of Social Sciences and the Dean in Charge of School of Management, Nagaland University. We're really grateful that you could be a part of this program this afternoon. The HOD of the Political Science Department, all the department members, the faculty, and all students who are attending this program this afternoon. It is truly an honor for me to be speaking in this program initiated by the Political Science Department to honor and commemorate the turning of 75 years of the United Nations. I see that we have about a good number of 70 plus participants and even professors from other departments attending this program. It's so nice that you could join and support the political science department in this initiative. For us in Nagaland to be observing something of this kind is significant, especially to our younger generation to ensure that the younger generation understand the stark importance of, as the United Nations has put it very well, shaping our future together. 
Because while we are much stronger together, the deviation of just one individual in a society can detract and negatively impact the progress of a nation altogether. That is why it is so important to collaborate and to learn how to work together, even as we are all different individuals in this world with different perspectives and minds of our own. This is vital now more than ever, even as we see immense differences and, div and divide occurred in our very own land today with the Naga settlement being a major issue of contention with different Naga civil and political groups that are forging ahead with their own ideology, very often moving in different directions. But that's a topic for another day. This afternoon, as we celebrate the UN's completion of 75 years of existence, I wanted to take this brief moment to remind everyone that we must remember that nations coming together to improve lives is impossible without collective effort and collaboration. And that's where we all come in. It is in every action, every call to action, and even in action, that we convey an important message on our stance towards important issues in society. Therefore, it is imperative that while we must imbibe a positive outlook in whatever we do, we must also be sharply aware of the challenges and issues that we as a world face and that we must overcome together. We are undoubtedly all tied together. Humanity is tied together and we share a common responsibility to create a better world for us and the future generations that will come after us. So I felt it important to take this time out to remind everyone of the 17 sustainable development goals of the UN so that each of us in our own way, whenever we get the chance, we can do what we can to help sustain these goals. I'm happy that among the 17 sustainable goals, three of them have already been addressed by the students this afternoon. On Women by Philly, uh, the World Food Program by Zankum, and Climate Change by Gehito. So now I just wanna share with you uh, my screen. Sabur, if you'll allow me to just uh, present my screen. the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Just give me a moment. I hope you guys can see it. So on the screen, you can see the 17 Sustainable Development Goals which are put out in uh, serial number. Number one, no poverty. Number two, zero hunger. Three, good health and well-being. Four, quality education, which, was, which is what we're trying to do here today. Five, gender equality. Six, clean water and sanitation, a basic necessity that some parts in the world still do not even have. Seven, affordable and clean energy. Eight, decent work and economic growth. Nine is industry, innovation, and infrastructure. 10 is reduced inequality. 11, sustainable cities and communities. 12 is responsible consumption and production. 13, climate action. 14, life below water. 15, life on land. 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions and 17, which is partnerships for the goal. We can see the extensive amount of issues the UN's Sustainable Development Goals cover. Now for us, it is our responsibility to find a goal that's important to you and be a part of the movement. I'm saying this because I know the youth can help make a huge difference. It reminds me of the two Indonesian girls, Melati and Isabel Witsen, I don't know if you've heard of them, but they were on TED Talks too. Uh, they appeared on TED Talks and they're quite famous for their success at banning plastic bags in Indonesia. And this was done all at the age of 18 and 16. This is them receiving an award for their 
efforts towards they introduced bye-bye plastic bags in Indonesia. So this is inspiration for all of you to take away this afternoon. Likewise, I'd like to challenge all of you students who are attending and listening this afternoon that you too can make an impact in this world. As the vision and mission of the so College states, we are all here to create a positive impact in the world. And that is our hope for you. So on the one hand, we have the United Nations. And on the other hand, we have the Tipso College students. Dream big, think big, and do it together. And let us all help shape a better future for the world. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Ma'am Hawasa, on speaking on the significance of the UN and also coming together of all nations to get rid of all role issues. Coming to the next, we have recorded dance, contemporary dance by K. Rachel Ism and Ross M. Lota of BA third semester. Vice Principal, Madam, you have to unmute your mic. Sorry for the inconvenience due to some technical issues. We're not able to play. So next to the next program. Now we have special appeals and messages from the students and teachers. From the student side, we have 
Kehlun Bey, Molemla, Ime Samba, and Hipito Achmi. From the teacher's side, we have Dr. Vijaya, Sir Supong, and Dr. Sabur. You may take your time accordingly, one after the other. Despite all the flaws and issues the COVID has created 
you is still holding strong and strong and still leading the world towards peace and unity. Well, maintaining our balance between all countries was never easy and is never easy. But U.S. determination and strong will is proving us a positive outcome. Our balance will maintain that another war doesn't break out. As we all know, clearly that we don't need wars to settle the rest. The fact that it was not able to waste down more hardships, issues, and quite forgetting criticism is indeed a war. Not all members of the countries agree to each other sometimes, but the UN doesn't look upon that, but also tries to bring measures for the betterment of all the countries, and at the end of the day, despite that it's so not in good or the best, the benefit is joined by all. Thank you, Yuan, for all your dedication and hard work. Keep working for the betterment of the entire world with peace and unity. Happy Sunday, University. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Respected our distinguished guest, Sir John Sima, Mem Hawasa Lorin, the principal of Tetsa College, uh, Dr. Remy, the HOD of Political Science Department. My good name is Hippito Keatrimi. I'm the former uh, students of the Tetsu College. I'm so blessed to be back at my own family once again. In order to kick off with my presentation, I'd like to highlight a few points about a United Nation, how it was being origin. And in order to understand, we can break down into two different dimensions. That is before 19th century and after 19th century. As you all know that before 19th century, the Roman Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Christian powers plays a crucial role in maintaining international peace across their own nation states. Coming to, uh, coming to the 19th century, as you all know that the League of Nations, the Charter Act, the European Concert plays a vital role in maintaining a peace across the nation. So today what, what I feel and what I do is that United Nations plays a crucial role and it was formed in the year 24 October 1945, and today we are organizing this event, and I'm so proud to be a part of the Tetsuo College. As you all know that, Trigavli was appointed as the first general secretary of United Nations, and today United Nations plays an important role in settling the disputes between the India and Pakistan. Not only that, but it also helped in settling the disputes between the ISIS and the Israel countries. Today, United Nations help in providing food across like 90 million people. Not only that, but it also assists around 35 refugees across the world globe. And today, United Nations, under United Nations, 140 countries come together in order to fight against this climate change. So these are the few achievements and few origins of United Nations. So in my conclusion, I would like to put up a famous quotation which was stated by one of the General Secretary of the United Nations, which says, today, your small step might be the biggest journey for tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to thank first the organizers for giving me this opportunity. And I am Vijaya Jamandeshwari, faculty in Department of Political Science. So as we are observing the platinum jubilee of an international organization founded for the earnest cause to save hum humankind from war and conflict, United Nations is entering its 76th year on a sober note with a handful of challenges surrounding it. And not only this, the urge to have an international organization for the world battered by two world wars and failure of League of Nations provided safe ground for United Nations. And United Nations represents the aspirations of humankind and stands for promotion of basic human rights, peaceful means of coexistence, and peaceful conflict resolution. 
role of united nations in peace keeping missions development of basic infrastructure for the vulnerable sections of world like mitigation of hunger deprivation health water and hygiene and uphold of human rights particularly rights of children women ethnic minorities and indigenous people is commendable so the flip side to this narration is the tussle between its principles and power so the incidents during cold war and post cold war discredited the role of united nations the power elite of united nations that is the permanent five of the security council are dominating the structure through their veto power so the new world order perceived by united nations is aborted due to benign hegemony of few developed nations and rivalries of member states are the underlying problems which has to be dealt with iron hand reforms to the organization are must particularly speaking about united nations security council adversaries are even remained undeterred by the present pandemic crisis and to make remarks about this tussle i want to mention here mr gutierrez the present united nations secretary general in his own words that regarding this uh, yeah, attitude of the elite towards the present uh, crisis as the united nations is only a strong entity when its members are committed to its ideals otherwise it is a failure so to conclude i want i want to say that for united nations to live up to its expectations there must be global push against power of elite members through which united nations can restore balance between its principles and power thank you i also like to echo this concern as other participants has mentioned about the observance of this 75th year of the united nation we have seen that un has been instrumental in uh, maintaining world peace and then un has been involved in many humanitarian activities which has brought peace and harmony and uh, development to many deprived sections of the people given the fact that the world is still divided between the global south and the global north it is all the more imperative that the un plays a very important role given the fact that the threat that the world is facing from various um, sources be it uh, chemical weapons be it uh, through uh, various uh, known and unknown sources and therefore it is all the more incumbent upon the un to uh, leap up to its ideal at the same time the world is going through a phase where the increase of the right wing population populism is increasing day by day be it in turkey be it in us be it in france we are seeing the, the emergence of right wing which is reminiscent of the time of the second world war therefore it is important that uh, the un all the more makes policies try to to implement a, a directive whereby they could incorporate the concerns of the developing countries as well at last i would like to uh, congratulate once again the tetsu college for commemorating this event day thank you good afternoon to all can you hear me and samir and from the test to college and we are happy to get the opportunity to give the present something message on the occasion of the 70th anniversary of the foundation of the united uh, united nation organization it is essential to look back on two things like the circumstances under which even was born whether even as a leader to its founding principles or not and challenges faced by UN world in contemporary era. UN world in its journey has faced many crises and threats to the existence. In spite of these challenges, UN is moving ahead with the great seal to rise the humanitarian crisis across the globe. Humanitarian crises are the result of 
the investment still policies making the basis in making of the elite of the rich countries. I would like to highlight the plight of the vulnerable sections of the society like children, women, ethnic minorities and indigenous people throughout the world facing civil wars, religious persecutions, hunger and depression, lack of basic communities as well as loss of habits and livelihood. Lack of basic infrastructure facilities is under developed and developing countries. Conflict of resources and exploitation response by the rich and developed countries are predominantly leading the, these vulnerable sections to hunger, malnutrition, bone and epistemic pandemic leading to the worst refugee crisis in the last two decades. Flight of the refugees is a flood of flood and humanity for avoiding further deterioration of these crises, you must try to reach sustainable development goals by 2030. Thank you. And once again, thank you for the interest of organization for the Sense Department. Thank you, teachers and students for the message. Now we have come to the most awaited part of the session, that is commemorative speech by our guest speaker. He'll be speaking on the theme, recalling and supporting the founding missions, missions of the UN. Sir, if you're ready, please take your time. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for inviting me to be here as your guest speaker. Uh, thank you to the chairperson, and I will also like to thank to the this uh, HOD of uh, Political Science Department, Dr. Remy Longley, and also your uh, the vice principal of the college, Madam Ewasa Lorin and their colleagues in the Department of uh, Political Science and the teachers, the faculty members in the Tesla College, and also the students of Tesla College present here. Uh, the topic which I, will, I was asked to speak on this uh, in commemoration of uh, 75 years of UN establishment, recalling and supporting the founding mission of the UN. As you all know that the uh, United Nations was formed in 1945 after the massive destruction caused by the Second World War. The, the League of Nations, although the League of Nations was uh, formed in uh, 1919 after the Treaty of the Versailles, but uh, this could not able to prevent the Second World War. So, here, this the credit of uh, Commission of the United Nations was under the initiation of uh, the American President Franklin Roosevelt and the Prime Minister of uh, Great Britain, Winston Churchill. They held a secret meeting in this uh, uh, <coughs> the meeting. <coughs> aboard these uh, naval ships in the Placent Bay near this uh, Newfoundland, Canada. And they, they discuss uh, by creating this uh, body for international effort and issue uh, for making a peace effort. And also make the issue the joint statement called this Atlantic Charter in August 1941. Now, they, what they have uh, discussed here is that how they have to prevent war and how the war has been uh, caused. And so the, the intention was to see that uh, how to create uh, peace among the world, nations around the world. Now, over the next couple of years, several meetings took place and particularly they have initiated among the allied powers who were against 
the Axis powers, particularly against Germany, Italy, and Japan. Now, this, uh, the, 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 this, uh, the, the Allied power, they decided on the post Cold War Charter that will describe the precise role of the United Nations. Now, what kind of uh, the uh, role of the United Nations should play for maintaining international peace and security around the world? And for that, they feel that unless political power is given to the UN, and if the UN is uh, established in the political context, then only they will be able to maintain international peace and security. So, finally, they have uh, the United Nations, they have uh, just uh, procured the proposal, and finally, the United Nations came into existence on October 24, 1945, after being ratified by the 50 member countries. And among these uh, 50 member countries, you will find that even India at that time, India was not yet a sovereign independent state, but India also has become one of the founding member, or you can say the charter member of the United Nations. And because of that, India is also born by the United Nations, Charter and water where United Nations has to, the regulation has to be there and that has to abide by that. Now you'll find that uh, this, uh, at that time when the United Nations was formed, there were only 50 member countries, but now you'll find that in, uh, it has been expanded to 193 countries. When the United Nations was formed, you will find that it was uh, tasked to take care of these uh, millions of refugees to rehabilitate and to repatriate caused by the Great World War II. Now, you'll find that uh, thousands, millions of people were there, uh, killed. Millions of people were also displaced. Millions of people were also died out of poverty or uh, because of this is because of the war. Now you will find that uh, how when the United Nations were formed, you will find that the UN was having a tough time. Now after 75 years again you'll find that the United Nations UN completed now 75 years. Now to commemorate the historic moment, the meeting, then that the future we want, the future we want, the UN win it. The reaffirming our collective commitment to multilateralism is a landmark event as for the first time in 75 years, the 193 member body will be holding a session virtually to mark 75 years anniversary on account of the COVID outbreak. Here, this um, as a UN marks its uh, 75 anniversary, the world is in term. The COVID-19 pandemic has resulted more than 1 million dead so far, and more than 10 million people were infected by this virus. And is nowhere to close to be content. Now, with this, again, you will find that the world economy is experiencing the worst recession since the Great Depression of the 1930s because of job loss, unemployment, poverty, and starvation that has inflicted the world, particularly the third world countries, where 70% of the 
total populations of the third world lives under poverty line. Now, in this kind of a situation, how the United Nations has to play an important role and how to tackle these kind of problems and to solve these problems. This has become a great challenge to all of us. It is not only the UN, but also each and every one of us to play an important role to contribute to solve this the pandemic and to also solve the problems of poverty and hunger. Now, let us go back to this, uh, the charter and uh, mostly, but there are so many, but I just want to talk on three points. The United Nations was built on the three pillars. Now, there are so many other important uh, charters that the points that they are there, but I just want to uh, focus only on three points. The first one was to maintain international peace and security. To that end, to take effective collective measure for the prevention and removal of threats to the peace and security of the nations. Because only when there is peace among the nation, there will be security. And if there is a, only when there is a security, there will be peace, progress, and prosperity. So peace and security is two sides of the same coin, and it is a vice versa. If there is no peace, there cannot be security. There, if there is no security, there cannot be peace. And this is the two important, uh, one, very, one very important pillar of United Nations that was one very foundation that the United Nations was formed. Now, the second one is, the second pillar was human rights. Now, in 1948, the UN General Assembly approved the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which set out for the first time the fundamental rights including civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights that all countries were obliged to uphold. So I just want to discuss a few points. I'm not going to go very detailed, but this uh, one, uh, some of this, uh, the second pillar here on human rights, the civil rights, it is the most basic human right to fair and decent treatment for each and every individual. Whether you are from white or black, you're coming from uh, advanced or backward or from whichever race, you have the rights. You have to be given a fair treatment and you should have a freedom of speech and expressions. This is a one, one very, very important civil rights that has been enshrined in the Charter of the United Nations. The second one is the political rights. Rights of a citizen in a free society to participate in a governmental procedure where the people should have the right to participate, to cushion if there is any acts of commission or omission on the part of the government, the people have the rights to participate on the functioning of the government. Also, the citizens have the right to contest, they have the right to vote, and also they can also participate in the electoral process and the functioning of the government. We have another political rights here, particularly with uh, referring to the, in reference to the indigenous peoples. The indigenous people, they also have the right to self-determinations, and this is a part of their human rights. In what way they want to be governed, in what way they want to have the government, the type of the government, 
or in what way they are going to have their political system. This is a one here, we call it uh, political rights. That is also very much part of human rights. Now, the third one is the social rights. Here, we talk about social equality. What do you mean by social equality? We are talking about the social equality in terms of gender equality. What do you mean by gender equality? We talk about women, which, is, which consists of 50% of the world population. They should also have equal share in this government, liberties, civil rights, or properties, inheritance, whatever. Now, if you are not able to give them, that you cannot say that we are social equality. In the context of Nagaland, we always talk about that our Naga women also enjoy equal, equal opportunity, equality with men, but it all becomes superficial until and unless they are given equal opportunity in every field where men also, men has an access to all this corridor of power or inheritance or political power, whatnot. So this is a one very important aspect that social equality refers equality between men and women. This is what, as a student of uh, political science and uh, social scientist should always keep in mind that. The fourth one is, you talk about uh, uh, economic rights. Now, when you talk about economic rights, you talk about that each and every individual should have the right to have food. Nobody should be left without food. Nobody should be left without shelter and clothing or food, whatever. You have the right to have the resources. You have the right to possess the mineral or natural resources under your possessions, within and outside, whatever. If if you have economic right means you have even an opportunity to earn your livelihood. This is also part of economic rights, and this is also part of your human rights. Now, if you are capable, and if you are capable to possess and acquire any kind of things, this is also part of your uh, human rights. And economic rights is also part of economic rights, uh, human rights, I mean to say, sorry. Here, the next one, the fifth one is uh, cultural rights. When you talk about the cultural rights, preservation of your ethnic groups, now your tribes or your language, your traditions, now uh, your folk voice, you know, your customs. Now, when you talk about uh, uh, the culture, you talk about even your customary laws. Now, the customary laws is that mm, that govern your society. Now, how to regulate your system? This is some of very important where uh, the student of uh, political science and the social scientist and particularly the educated sections of the people should know that we have to see that the political rights, we not only talk about civil or political, but social rights that also give equality to each and everyone. Now here do we come back to this, uh, the third pillar of uh, it is, uh, of the UN Charter, that the third pillar was a development. Now, according to UN Charter, member countries are committed to promote social progress and better standard of life in larger freedom. 
Now, the development agenda includes, it encompasses the objective of reducing inequalities between developed and third world countries, including the, in, uh, through this decolonization, was also part of the World War II agenda. Now, here, when we talk about these uh, developments, we find that uh, there is a inequalities of economic development between the developed and the third world countries, particularly on these uh, technologies, industrials. These are some of uh, economic uh, disparities between the developed and the third world countries. So they, they are, uh, because of that, the third world countries also to the forum of the United Nations, they, on the platform of this, uh, the third world country, they demanded that there should be economic equalities and the developed countries should assist the third world countries for their economic development. On the basis of that, they have established new international economic order so that the gap between the developed countries and underdeveloped countries can be bridged. And they call it this South, Northern South cooperations. And for that, we need to see that the, the third world countries also should come forward. But the developed countries say that why would the third world countries are unable to catch up? with the developed countries, it is because your system, there is a, a, a problem in your system, and the system that you are not able to develop, it is mainly because you have not streamlined your system and your countries are mostly dominated by the corrupted leaders. And that is why your third world countries are inflicted by poverty and hunger and undevelopment. But the third world countries accuse the developed countries saying that all the resources that was available in, the, the, in their countries has been extracted and drained by the developed countries, by the colonial powers. And they have been left empty handed. And because of that, they see that their economy, they should assist them to develop the economy. That was the bone of contention. That is the context between the developed and the third world country. Anyway, whatever may be the reasons, they want that there should be equality between all the countries of the world. Now, besides this, there, although there has been lots of problems, but to this uh, UN, the UN has able to do so many commendable works. I do not want to waste uh, time to discuss so many things, so I just want to uh, cut short my speech. So, the to this uh, the UN, they have able to contain the another world war. Many of the world that has uh, developed, but that has been localized to the initiation of the UN, so that uh, that way UN has made a considerable uh, contribution to all to, uh, to the world peace. Now you will find that the UN has also uh, created uh, so many agencies, and through these agencies, they have done a commendable humanitarian works like WHO, ILO, uh, there's a Red Cross. They have also. Uh, there's a world, uh, International Children Emergency Fund. They also have uh, International Scientific and Cultural Agency for uh, in this, uh, educating uh, to many of the third world countries. And also, they also have a program on this uh, UN World for Food program in Iraq, peacekeeping force in many parts of the world. 
those are some of these uh, uh, commendable jobs. Here, among these uh, commendable jobs that Yuhan has done a lot, and that is uh, really, uh, um, I would like to discuss here a few points here that uh, gender equality and protection of the culture is uh, one of the most uh, notable programs that uh, has been achieved around the world. Although it may not be 100 success, percent success, but to some extent, it has been very successful, particularly this uh, empowerment of a woman and also protecting of the child. There's most and also the most uh, vulnerable sections of the people. Now, you will find that uh, with this uh, dismantling of the Berlin Wall in 1989, in November, and also this, uh, the Fourth World Conference on the Women's Rights at Beijing, given Peters the women's uh, empowerment, you'll find that uh, one very uh, um, glaring example, you can see is that Mrs. Angel Merkel, the Chancellor of the Germany. She is, she belongs to this East German, which was under the communist bloc. After the unification of the German, this uh, Mrs. Angel uh, Merkel, she has become the Chancellor of the uh, Germany, and she has uh, been the Chancellor for the third successive uh, tenure. And she has been considered as one of the greatest and the most capable leader in the European countries. This is one greatest achievement that uh, after the fourth wall, this after the dismantling of the German wall and Berlin wall, and also this uh, the fourth woman conference that was held in uh, 1995 at Beijing. And you also found that. Uh, uh, there's, uh, there, there are many women that are coming forward to take the leadership. Uh, just now, our vice principal has uh, shown in the clips that uh, how the young teenagers in uh, Indonesia has been getting this the award. This is also one of the greatest achievements that a woman has come forward to this, the agencies to the help of the propagating the rights of the woman in the UN. So this is uh, some of this, uh, uh, you know, to this uh, uh, UN platform that the woman's uh, lot has been improved a lot. Now, to cut short my speech, I just wanted the challenges ahead of the 75 years of UN, uh, uh, 75 years of UN celebration. Now, what is the most important uh, where, that UN has to face? Now, number one is that to contain COVID-19 pandemic around the world. Now, this is one of the unprecedented pandemic that after this 19, uh, 1919, that uh, Spanish pandemic. Now, here you will find that uh, this uh, pandemic has become one of this uh, enemy of the world that has united the world. But again, somewhere, some of the countries are flexing the muscle, trying to dictate others. This is uh, becoming uh, one of the challenges to this uh, United Nations, how to resolve this kind of the problems. Now, to this, because of the pandemic, now the United Nations has to face the challenges. One is to provide food to the poor and needy, and also to provide employment opportunity to those peoples, those who have been displaced because of pandemic. Now you'll find that even in India, you'll find that uh, so many peoples were met unemployed because of the pandemic. Now, this is uh, some of the uh, problems. Now, how do, 
how to solve these problems, the job opportunities, unemployment, unemployment. This is a one, uh, one very important aspect that the world has to face, and particularly to the third world countries like India, where millions of peoples are living under poverty line. Now, you also face that some of our students have already spoken on climate change and environment protections, environmental protection, greenhouse effects. So I'm not going to speak much on that, but I will also like to challenge our youngsters, try to protect our environment because the, you are the future of this the, uh, the universe. And unless, until and unless you protect the environment, how are we going to face? This is one problem. Even the Japan, the most developed countries, when they have over-exploited the resources, the environment, the environment has also got a limit. And because of that, there was a tsunami in Japan. So this is some of the problems that we have to, uh, to face. We have to, uh, to take care of that. Now, the UN also has to take the challenge, the crisis, the crisis over this, uh, the big and powerful countries that are, uh, are flexing the muscles. Now, Russia's take over, over part of the Ukraine. This is also one of the challenge that you have you gonna have to tackle the problems. Now, China is trying to take over the South China Sea. This is also one of these uh, the threat to neighboring countries in the South China Sea and also to India and to other small countries. Israel and Palestinian conflict, that is also one of the main problems that is facing the uh, countries around the world. Now you'll find that under the, some of there are some problems, civil war in Syria, or Yemen, Libya, Armenia, and uh, Azerbaijan, Rohingya refugees problems in uh, Myanmar, and there are many, many more problems that is created that there are crisis that is uh, facing this uh, UN. Now. Another more challenge that is facing the UN is democratization of the UN because the UN has been dominated and controlled by the big powers. And now it is up to the world members how we have to uh, democratize the UN, particularly the security councils and the veto powers that poses by the permanent Security Council members. Now, expansion of the Security Council members who are seeking this to become the permanent members, particularly this India, Japan, Germany, and Brazil. Now, we are also have to see that until and unless the UN, there is a democratization, they cannot be just equal and also equality among the rest of the world. And so this is uh, some of the challenges that the UN is uh, facing now. Now you will find that, of course, the UN uh, over the last 75 years, they have uh, tackled so many problems around the world. They have also solved the problems of the refugees, they also uh, solve the problems of uh, war. They also face the problems of uh, um, uh, the civil wars, in uh, particularly in the African countries. But they also fail in many aspects, where the UN has been criticized for their failure, not, not able to contain, and particularly they could not able to take action against the big powers when the big powers who are the culprit. Despite that, the UN could able to contribute all peace. So far, there has been war, 
but that has been localized. That has not been escalated to the whole, whole world. So this is a, one of the main contributions of the UN in the last 75 years. Now, we should also see to that that if you want the UN to be successful, each and every one of us should contribute, should give our effort to see that the UN should be able to function effectively for the betterment of the future generations. So despite this failure in many fronts, the UN remains highly influential institutions. More importantly, it embodies the best of humanity, the belief that all people observe basic dignity and that working together is the only way to deliver it. 75 years after its birth, you'll find the world beginning with the US, the most powerful countries must revive and recommit itself to the UN multilateralism that it embodies for the betterment of the world. So with this few word, I will like to conclude my speech. Thank you so much for uh, the organizers for inviting me to be your guest speaker. And I wish the Department of uh, Political Science uh, the HOD and the uh, faculty members, the students, and also the Tetsu College, all the best. Thank you so much for your time to speak on your functioning. Thank you so much for presentation and also for sharing it us with your insightful thoughts. I believe that everyone has benefited from your presentation. Now we have now we have mass reading of the preamble of the UN as a joint pledge of the allegiance to the UN. I request everyone of you to join us in reading the preamble. We, the people of the United Nations, determine to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war, which lies in our and to maintain human rights in the dignity and worth of the human person. In the rights of men and women and to reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights in the dignity and word of the human person in the equal rights of men and women and of nation large and small small and condition under which justice and respect for the obligations raising the treaty and other forces of international law can be maintained. And from the executive and legal centers is most in love and freedom. And for this end, we have to tolerate and live together in peace with one another as good neighbors. And to ensure the acceptance of principles and institutions of the methods that are the promotion of the economic and social advancement of all peoples. I have resolved
Now we've come to the end of the program. So to give the vote of thanks, I request Dr. Anirudha Babur, Assistant Professor. Honorable Chairperson, thank you for this opportunity. The United Nations is marking its 75th anniversary and uh, we are celebrating this grand event at Tesla College under the pioneering leadership of the Department of Political Science at a time of great destruction of the, for the world. Compounded by an unprecedented global health crisis with severe economic and social impacts and also the political strategic tantrums of countries like China, which has evidently threatened international peace and order. Question arises. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, will we emerge stronger and better equipped to work together? Or will distrust and isolation grow further? 2020 must be an year of dialogue when we come together to discuss our priorities as a human family and how we can build a better future for all. The whole basis of the United Nations is the right of all nations, great or small, to have weight, to have vote, to be attended to, to be a part of the 20th century. For the first time, more than ever before in human history, dear brothers and sisters, we have a common destiny. We can master it only if we face it together. And that, my friends, is why we have the United Nations. Let us not forget that the United Nations rose from the ashes of destruction and created a magnificent vision for all of humankind to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war and protect universal human rights. There have been accusations against United Nations. Many a times we come across concerns that the United Nation is failing. But my dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, United Nations is not failing. Rather, we are collectively failing its charter and ideals to the decisions we make or fail to make. When we are ready and collectively decide to fulfill the ideals of the United Nations, we will see the conventions, reports, and structures as evaluable tools for getting there. Dear friends, also, I would like to mention here, and I would like to draw your attention to an important fact that as a result of the Holocaust, the United Nations pledge that nothing like that seen against humanity would be allowed to happen again. This pledge has not been honored. We have had and continue to have Holocaust incidents by Russia, China, Cambodia, North Korea, and in Africa, the Middle East, and other countries where millions of people have been tortured and not murdered, either in the name of the politics or in the name of nationalism. Dear friends, when we celebrate 75th anniversary of the United Nations, let us not celebrate it blindly. Let us make United Nations also accountable. That is very important. As Professor John Sema rightly pointed out, there have been serious power imbalance in the world and United Nations is collectively failing to adjust the balance of power. The countries which are politically superior are trying to suppress the interest of the countries which are still rising from the ashes. Let us look at Africa. Let us look at sub-Saharan regions in the Africa. Let us look at Asia. And then let us look at the Europe. I'm not simply talking from the economic perspective or from simply from the political perspective. But as a student of political science and also as a student of international law, I believe as a citizen of the world and a citizen of India, belonging to one of the ancient civilizations in the world that strive for the peace, it is our responsibility, individual and collective, to make each other answerable to the ideals established by the United Nations. It is not just a question of an individual. It is not just a question of a nation. It is not just a question of the United Nations and its organ. My dear friends, 
dear brothers and sisters and ladies and gentlemen it is a question of humanity the survival of humanity and also the collective progress of the mankind we uh, we have taken a very good decision to commemorate 75th anniversary of the united nations and i'm really thankful to uh, professor uh, john sema for his time for his words for his speech and most importantly for his enlightening remarks last few minutes of his speech uh, you know are really important i request you to listen to them once again when we put it on the youtube i'm also thankful to the head of the department of uh, political science a very energetic person and my dear friend professor ringmai longmai for his time and for his dedication i'm also thankful to all my students all my colleagues and all the participants who have participated in this important program let me remind you once again this is not just a celebration but rather we are required to contemplate we are required to think after all at the end we are the world we are the world and yes 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 we are the world thank you so much i declare the program is finished thank you so much yeah thank you so much to all of you for inviting me to be part of your program thank you so much I would like to thank uh, our vice principal, the Dr. Hevesa Lorin, for her time also and uh, her sharing. Um, actually, all the sharing today has benefited richly to the students and teachers of uh, international politics. Most importantly, the teachers and students of international organization. I would like to thank every one of you uh, from the on behalf of the department. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a great evening ahead. Thank you.